A little while ago, I did a video entitled Tips and Tricks for using the Raspberry Pi. Well, today I'm going to switch platforms and do the same thing for Mac OS. But first, a bit of housekeeping. I draw your attention to the description below this video on YouTube. Down there, you will see that there is a PDF file linked that shows the contents of the slides that you will see in this video. I recommend you open it up now and then resume watching the video once you have it open in front of you. The reason for this is we will be inputting some fairly lengthy terminal commands and although you're more than welcome to just copy them and type them in yourself I find it a lot easier to copy and paste from the presentation materials into the terminal window. The choice is yours. So like we did with the Pi, I'm going to show you how to set up a path on Mac OS that allows you to issue simplified terminal commands when starting the server. Then I'm going to move on and show you how you can create an icon you can click on to start the server because as you know, I'm a point and click guy and I hate typing anything in the terminal window. And then the third item is remote control of a server running on Mac OS. Well, the fact is, remote control is the same regardless of platform. And I already covered that in the Pi Tips and Tricks video, so I won't go over it again here. If you want to do remote control using SSH, I recommend you go to the uh, document I prepared for using the Raspberry Pi. The steps are exactly the same here. So without further ado, let's get on to the first part and I'll show you how to set up a path. In the current preview release of SDR Connect, it can be a little bit cumbersome to start up the server. First, you have to navigate to the directory where the SDR Connect executable resides, and then you can type in the command to actually start the server. Rather than trying to remember the CD command, one thing you can do is navigate to your Applications folder, then find SDR Connect, View Package Contents, open up the Mac OS directory, and then if you have the path name shown at the bottom of your Finder window, you can right-click and do Copy Path Name. Then you can open up a terminal window, type CD space, and then paste in the path name you just copied. Press Enter and now you will see that you're working in the Mac OS directory. So now you can type in the command to launch the server. SDR connect space dash dash server as a minimum. Having done that, as you can see, the server starts up in the usual way. So it's somewhat cumbersome. But having said that, if you don't know this, you can actually step through the history of commands you've issued in terminal by using the up arrow key. So next time, you could use the up arrow key and step back to where you see the command to change the directory to the one you want. But there's a better way. Let's explore doing that. So what we're going to do is set up a path for the Mac OS that will allow us to just type in the server start command and that will automatically go to the right place and start the server for us. So as I mentioned previously, I'm going to open up the presentation materials and use that as my guide for what to put into the terminal. So we're going to copy the path command from the presentation material, Control c and then paste it, Control v into the terminal window. Once we've done that, the next step is we want to verify it and to do that, we type the echo command. So we type in echo space dollar sign path all uppercase and press enter. Now, if we look at the output, if we look deeply, we can see within that the path that we've set up that points us to that Mac OS folder we navigated to manually earlier on. So having done that, when we want to start the server, we can go to our home prompt and simply type in the server command. So from now on, after a reboot or anything else, when we want to start the server, we don't have to mess around with doing the CD command. We can just type in the command to start the server. 
I know it can be kind of hard to see what's going on on the screen, but if you go to the presentation linked in the description, you will see it spelled out nice and large for you. One other thing worth noting is, I keep talking about starting the server, but if you have uh, multiple RSPs connected to your Mac and you want to open up a second instance of SDR Connect, you can issue that command from the home prompt as well. And that is the way to start a second instance on the Mac. Okay, so we simplified the process of starting the server, but how about we get rid of using terminal altogether? To do that, we're going to create a shell script and make it executable by double clicking on an icon. Much better. Once again, I recommend you open up the support materials because we're going to be copying and pasting some stuff in terminal. We'll begin by opening up text edit. So go to your applications folder, find text edit and open it up. Next, we'll go back to the presentation materials and copy the two lines that we're going to use to generate the script. So we highlight them and then do a control C and then go back to text edit and do a control V to paste them in place. The next step is very important. We go to the format menu and we select make plain text. As you can see the appearance is now somewhat different. You will notice that in this example I elected to specify a particular port number, although that's not absolutely necessary. In my case, that's usually what I do so I can distinguish between different servers on my home network. Additionally, if you have uh, multiple RSPs or you want to set any other server parameters, you can add those options in the usual way, and now is the time to put them into this script file. This is also the place to specify any device options you want to use when starting the server. So having specified the server command and options we want to use, we now need to save the file. In the usual way, we will go to File Save. In the window that opens, you can specify the file name. For convenience, I'm just going to call it SDR Connect Server. As you see, my typing is terrible. I probably should have copied and pasted this as well. But most importantly, at the end, we must append dot .command. And then save the file to your desktop, which will be convenient for the next step. So having done that, if we look on our desktop, we will see that we have created an icon. I'll bring it out to the middle to highlight it. And uh, you'll see it's called a shell script. The next step after that is we need to make this executable. I learned my lesson, so I'm going to bring up the presentation materials and copy and paste this next command. So we highlight it and do control C. Then we go to terminal and paste it in place and hit enter. Of course, if you chose a different file name in the previous step, you should modify this command to reflect the file name that you chose. I recommend you do not put spaces in there. So now it should be executable. So if we go to the icon on our desktop and double click on it, we can see if it works. And what do you know? The server's starting up. So now we have something that works. We've achieved functionality, but let's be honest, that shell script icon is hardly inspiring. Let's see if we can do something to improve that. What I'm going to do is change the icon so it matches the one used for the SDR Connect client. Alternatively, feel free to use any other icons that you prefer for this application. So let's open up our Applications folder and navigate to where we have SDR Connect. 
Once we find SDR Connect, we can right click on it and select Get Info. Now let's do the same thing on our shell script. Right click Get Info. If we now go to the SDR Connect icon in the upper left, you'll see it's highlighted. We can do Edit Copy. Now let's select the icon for our shell script. Again, Edit but this time paste and sure enough the icon is now changed. It should be reflected on the desktop in just a second. There it is. One other thing I like to do for appearance sake is get info again and check the box that says hide file extension. Simply double click on it and the server starts right up. Now. You can leave the icon on your desktop, or if you prefer, you could stick it down in the dock. I call that a success. No more terminal commands required. And for completeness, here is a slide that you can get to from the link in the description below this video that gives you all the instructions to do what I just demonstrated for you. Well, that's it for this video. Again, if you're interested in using SSH for remote control of a server, I refer you to the uh, Pi video I did earlier, which is linked to in the description below. Hopefully you found this video useful and uh, I appreciate you watching. For further information, please go to our website to the specific page for SDR Connect as shown. 73.